Hello, Ian. Hi, Des. How are you? Good. I'm doing great. How are you doing, my man? Yeah, good. Very good. Thanks for asking. Okay. Uh, at what time is it over there? It must be evening on a Thursday? Oh, that's all right. That's okay then. I always get a bit. I I I, I always get a bit concerned when I, we we phone America and I'm like, are they like two o'clock in the morning or I'm never too sure. So good. Nah, they would never they would never set up uh, interviews at two o'clock in the morning. I know that for a fact. <laughs> good. <laughs> all right. So um, look, obviously I know you. Otherwise, otherwise you'd be getting otherwise you'd be getting one word answers. You know what I mean. <laughs> but but I, I thought being like a rock star, that would be like when you guys wake up. My man, I run like five different businesses. I'm up at 4.30 a.m. and I go to bed at about 11.30 p.m. every single night uh, because I run the Oracle Management, the Oracle Merch. Uh, we're starting Oracle Record Label through the Orchard. I'm running Devil Driver plus Sun Cult, which is our family business with Randy from Land of God. It's like I'm, I'm constantly working. Uh, yeah, we well, need to sleep. <laughs> you need to sleep. All right. Yeah, well, tonight that tonight that night. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know um, uh, you're super busy. I know there's obviously got a lot um, of these phone calls over the last few days, so I'll get right into it. Ask you a few questions. You know how it goes. So um, you're coming down to Australia uh, in a couple of months, end of August. It's the first time. Devil Driver have been here in five years. What can we expect from, from the tour? Expect a blistering set. I think the songs are going to be going so quickly, I'm not going to be able to say hello for the first, you know, first eight or nine songs. Uh, we've got a real special set, some throwback stuff from my past. It's going to be entering the system. Uh, the band starts rehearsal tomorrow. And we actually embark in about 10 to 12 days on a, a six-week tour in the United States. It's just about all sold out. So we're going to be tuned up and ready, and we're going to be on fire. Also, bringing all the remains is going to be a good bill for people. And, yeah, it's been five years. We were supposed to come down a year or two ago with a festival that kind of went defunct. We'll remain, you know, we'll leave them nameless. But that's why the long wait. So it's been very exciting for us knowing that, that uh, Australia is planned destroy all lines and, and we're coming down we cannot wait awesome awesome i i do i do know the festival you're talking about so we will uh we'll sidestep that one that's not a problem when there you go when, yeah. when you mentioned about um bringing in something from the past i was going to leave this till later on are you talking cold chamber we got some songs from the past coming in that set man i, I would assume people should go hide and get a ticket because i live the ticket today and if you're hearing this right now and you haven't got a ticket go out and get one now and the set is going to be extremely special and it's going to be blistering and it's going to have a lot of uh, a lot of surprises in it that's that's what i can see from there nice nice and um, you mentioned as well when you're about to go into a tour uh, in, in america with uh, i think it's dope and static x uh, yeah i mean uh, uh, what what's I mean, static x are doing something a little bit different and we'll come back to to, to that later on um, and then you also mentioned about All the Remains. How did the tour with All the Remains come about? Because they've not been here in a while either. Right. Well, you know, look, we started talking about coming over, and uh, agents will talk. And they started saying, well, look, All the Remains is going to come. And I said, great, I'd love to have them as, a, as an opener. Um, we know those guys who extremely well. Uh, Bubble, who played bass for me for a year or two, is, is in that band now. So they're good, they're good guys. I think they're a great opening band. They're going to be perfect for a double driver show. Excellent. And any time you can put together a good package for people, it's always it's always the best, isn't it? Value for money. And, and, and that's what fans want. They want value for money, and you guys are, will be delivering it, which is great. I mean, you've had a lot of lineup changes. Uh, Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, you've had a lot of lineup changes as well over the last few years. How has that changed the um, the style of Devil Driver? I mean, in reality, man, uh, in 20 years, I've only had two lineup changes, and I can tell you 40 other bands that have had more than that. Uh, so, really, I've had like probably the least lineup changes of a of a lot of the bands that I exist with. But what has happened is, I think the music has grown from that. 
Uh, we have just come off writing a double record that's going to be a staggered release to come out next year and the following year. And now that I'm listening back to those songs and we're getting ready to master those songs, I'm realizing that you know the game has been stepped up uh, by multitudes. I think people are going to really enjoy what they're going to get. But, you know, look, any time that a band has members where they're not getting along uh, or the writing isn't going as, as directed or people are dabbling too much in, in booze and kind of uh, losing what a band really is, it's essential to make changes. And, and that's what I did. So uh, this lineup that I have now has been current for a while now, and the writing process is, was amazing with these cats, and the records and the stuff that we're coming out with is just, you know, absolutely beyond anything we've ever done. Devil Driver is one of those bands that is on a slow grow, and even right now, uh, there's a fever about us here in the States that's unbelievable. And, you know, shows are selling out, like I said, uh, and I'm, I'm extremely happy, you know, to know the brand's been around for... 20, almost 20 plus years now and it's just stronger than ever somebody said to me the other day you know Des I saw you guys the other night and uh, it's just full of 20 year olds I, and I said I don't know how that is but the bottom line is the youth is kind of feeling the no bullshit attitude I've got and the band has and they're really latching onto it they know that we're not the kind of band that's going to give you like big hooky radio tracks uh, you know we're not sing songy uh, on our courses to make sure we make it to radio and the TV. And I think people are seeing through a lot of the bands that are doing that now. A lot of the metal bands that I started with have all turned into radio bands. And uh, we have stayed the course. And we're going to die with our boots on, and that's the way that it goes. And I think people are really feeling that attitude from us. And it's, you know, it's really helping in our favor that we're staying the course. That's a good, it's an interesting concept you put there because it's a conversation that I've had as well. Like you've mentioned there, that there almost seems to be um, a gap in the market now for bands that just, they're just balls to the wall. It's not about, like you mentioned, having a, a, a really processed production sound. And do you think that's what's happening at this point? Right. Because there's all these bands have moved to that, and I don't want to mention any of them either. But you guys then just stand alone and go, no, we're still we're 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 a metal band, and you're going to come here and you're going to thrash your head, and this is what it's about. Right, I do. Mean, look, the, the thing about Devil Driver is our reputation precedes us. There's a lot of venues in the United States we can't even play because it gets so insane that the venue people have just said, right, we just don't want to deal with that, and that's a good thing. That yeah. means that our, li our live music is transferring, and uh, I'm extremely proud of that. On the other side of that coin, a lot of the bands that I've started with, a lot of the bands that are surrounding us now have all turned into radio bands, and it's just not for me, right? If we make it to that format, TV or radio, it's because somebody picked up on something that was different, that was viable, that was vicious, but it transferred to that that arena, and uh we do not skew our music to transfer to any arena. And I'll give, I'll give you an example. We recorded well over 20, 20, 25 songs for this new record. There was one tune in particular, uh, and I'm never saying clean vocals inside Devil Driver. There's one tune in particular where I said, well, this verse like has to have clean vocal. It almost sounds like I've got to be clean here, yeah. and then this chorus is going to be the heaviest chorus I've ever heard. And that started a huge like a huge talk within Double Driver about the format of songs and how bands do it. So let me give you an example. If you have like a real heavy verse and a real clean, clean, uh, big chorus, uh, uh, that is obviously skewed. Your art is obviously skewed to make it towards right. radio or towards TV. If you do it the opposite way and you're doing, you know, say, say you're singing clean on some verses, but then the chorus is just balls out, well, that's obviously not skewed. For those, for those radio, those TV, those, those outlets, and that becomes pure art. And there was a time we were all sitting in the room, even with the producer, going, you know, we don't know what we're going to do here, but it just started the conversation of what is pure and what is not. And I just think that a lot of the stuff that's going on right now is very contrived, and I can see right through it, and it's just not my, not my thing to take. And, you know, I've always said I'm going to die with my boots on, and that's the way that it's going to be, you know? Well, let's let's bring up then trying uh, the albums and trying something. You've done the country covers album. What was the reaction? Right. What was the reaction to that? Oh, well, I, I rephrased that. Man, it was a, you know, I had a lot of people that were 
lot of calls, right, saying, hey, you can't do that. You can't put country and metal together. That's going to be bad for your brand. I wouldn't do this. Now those same people are sending me emails congratulating me because when you get a song like Ghost Riders in the Sky with John mm-hmm. Cash's son, John Carter Cash, Randy from Lamb of God, and myself, like, this shit's not going to go wrong. Especially because the record was so heavy and that was our interpretation of those outlaw tracks. I've said this many times that people need to know if you come to America and you're backstage, you're on a tour bus, you're tailgating somewhere at a concert, you're going to hear Pantera into Willie Nelson, into Johnny Cash, into Slayer, nobody bats an eye. Yeah. So I wondered why nobody had put that together in the proper way, and I'm glad that we did it. I think it was extremely well received, came out high in the Billboard charts, um, has really kind of started a movement, which is really strange. Uh, a guy sent me a flyer from Texas the other night that said, right, all your local bands come out on Thursday night, all your local heavy metal bands are covering their favorite country tracks. Nice, nice. And I said, well, now it just started a scene. Like, what did we start here? So it's pretty cool. When you do things out of box, when you don't skew your art, when you do things for the gratis of yourself and of the people who listen to your music, it comes off authentic, it comes out real, and it, and it comes out right, frankly. So I'm real proud of that record, real proud. And it was a very hard thing to get done with all of the guests on it. It was almost impossible. Two things I would say to never do. Don't ever do a cover record with 20 guests like I did. It's, it's almost impossible to get done. And if somebody offers you uh, a double album, <laughs> turn it away. Because I, I about killed myself getting this thing to the proper vision. Uh, so, you know, I, I'm just I'm pleased with all the work that we've been putting in as a band. I was going to talk about the, the yeah the, the 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 double album. I mean, originally that was set up as a concept album, but if you just mentioned it's going to be now two standalone albums. Two standalone albums, a staggered release, a year apart, and it is a concept record. Uh, I can't get too much more into that. Uh, I'll wait till we're doing those those press junkets for the record. I will say this that. If I were to stand alone and say, show me your finest moment, I'm going to definitely show you what's getting ready to come. People are going to be tripping. We've, we've messed with our sound. Uh, we've gone we've gone even more, I want to say, heavy and chaotic. It's a, it's a whole refreshing thing that's getting ready to happen, as well as we broke all the rules. So if you like Cold Chamber or me in Cold Chamber, my vocals in Cold Chamber, or you like me in Devil's Driver, you're going to get a little bit of both. And I'm kind of embracing all the worlds that I do and that I've done in the past. And that made for a huge sounding record. And something that is, you know, somebody was listening to it loose the other day and said, like, I know it's Cold I, I mean, I know that it's, it's, it's Devil's Driver, but, and I know you are from Cold Chamber, but I can't figure out what this is because this music is heavy but your vocals are doing all sorts of things like and i said well what does it sound like to you he said it sounds like a new sound i said okay great that's, that's what you exactly want. what it is so i think people are really gonna love we pushed the boundaries on everything man we didn't dial anything back we didn't water anything down we didn't skew any of the art for uh, those commercial venues like radio and, and and such and i think people are going to really latch on to what's happening Excellent, excellent. Um, there was a comment I think you made on your Instagram post about that, and Loud Loudwire picked up on it. They were the first ones I saw. Well, you made a comment saying you're proud to go out like this, which straight away Loudwire were like, "Is this the end of Devil Driver?" So I'm going to ask: Is it? Is this the last hurrah? No, it's not. But I am making a slow and steady exit uh, and I wouldn't call it an exit. I would just say that like now I'm not gonna tour 250, 300 days a year, you know? That's just, I've been doing that since 1995. I started touring with Black Sabbath and Pantera in soccer stadiums. So at a certain point, I had to stop the grinding kind of touring and only do, you know, 100, 150 shows a year, which, which actually sounds like a lot to some people, but for me, you know, that's a step down. But, you know, I think it is essential, you know, the point that I'm running a, a major management company I'm starting a major, major label. Uh, I've got, you know, a merchandise company that's off the hook right now. There's a lot of things going on. I really enjoy being behind the curtain yeah. and helping artists, such as the ones that we manage. I mean, we manage Cradle of Filth, Comedy Christ, Wednesday 13, Devil Driver. You know, Wednesday 13, Cradle of Filth are getting ready to see you guys soon, as yes. well as Comedy Christ getting ready to see you guys soon. Yep. 
so I really enjoy being being behind the curtain. Um, now that being said, man, it's like, <laughs> how do you think and you choose your battles? Because I'm the kind of guy I sit at home and I'm like, okay, I've been home for two days. Like I need to get on the road. So that that thing for the stage has not left me. And I guess what I really meant by that is, every time you leave, you do a record, you better leave your finest moment rather than leave a moment that a guy like me can listen to your record and sniff out every little skew that you're doing to make it to the radio, make it to TV and to build yourself rather than doing pure art from your heart. Yeah. So I tend to I tend to think like, yeah, if I had to put out these two records and stand down for let's say two, three, four, five years, I would be happy to do it. And I, you, when you hear the record, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Cool, cool. Uh, well, I, I mean, I've been following your career since the Cold Chamber days. I saw you back in them soccer stadiums back in the in the UK, back in the uh, mid to late 90s. Oh, shit. So I remember yeah. them days. I was all there. I remember seeing you touring with likes of Typo Negative. Oh, man, in... you know, I, remember, I remember them sort of. <laughs> 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 they, they, they say they say that it's because you can remember it, you weren't there. <laughs> well, I agree. I agree. <laughs> I agree. I, I, actually, I reckon... I will tell you this, right? Here's the thing, right? I've been sober for almost four years, uh, vegan for a little longer than that. And what I've realized is, as I sit back and I kind of think of the past, you know, I realize where my future has to go. And it's very exciting for me to come down to Australia right now and play on stage, like, in the best shape of my life, like, you know, dropped almost 40 pounds, sober as a judge, and absolutely ferocious to the tune of, like, I had no idea where I dialed up that ferociousness, but it came when I dropped booze. So to come and share the stage in Australia with the fans that have always backed the Devil Driver, and to have me see that person on stage rather than a dude that's had you know eight eight or nine shots of fucking whiskey, I think that to get something extremely special. And that's another reason why I said, hey, if I had to walk away now, I would because I feel like I've got it all together right now. Yeah. And with this next record and with this next touring cycle, it's just, it's all together. There's no, you know, there's there's no missteps at all. I think, I, I think that is a, a wonderful um, a statement of, of sobriety and of the impacts of, of, uh, of that change in your lifestyle, especially with everything you're doing. So, and, I, and I've only got... Absolutely, absolutely. I've only got 20 minutes, and I'm already up to, I think, 18 or 19. So I will ask one... Yeah, don't worry about it. They'll, 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 they'll ring through when they want to. Look, mate, here, here's the bottom line. When you sit back in the chair by the pool with your dogs, and you're sober for years, and you look at your wife, and you apologize for missing your kids graduating from high school, then you realize life is short, time to slow it down just a little bit, and give the home life some love that it... That it endu- it's the reason why it endures for me is because I have a lot of love here at my house with my children, my wife, etc. So that's why you hear me saying, you know, am I going to slow down a little? Absolutely, 100%. And if you want to see a devil driver headliner run, come out to this one because who, who knows what the future holds, to be honest with you. Yeah. I'll ask one last question and then I'll let you go on your day if you don't mind. Um, sure. We're talk- you mentioned about the Static X uh, tour earlier what's your that's an interesting concept that they're doing what's your take on that well people need to know this that back in the day i stumbled into a little club in front of 40 people and i'm the one that found static x i'm the one that found them and turned them on to the people that got them their first record deal etc so they came to me to manage the project and i said well what is this and they said this is in memory of wayne and uh I'm not going to lie, I got a tear in my eye. Yeah. There's been a lot of bands, I mean, from ACDC on down, where their singers die, and they go on to having huge careers. Like, you wouldn't have Back in Black if they would have stopped right. ACDC, right? So, for me, I said, right, if this is authentic, show me. And they did. And when they presented it with the singer that's going to be doing it, wearing this kind of half mask over his face, his hair up, and he's dressed like Wayne, and he's not telling anybody who he is, he doesn't want to do interviews as who he is right now, at this point at least. He wants to, people to focus on Static X and the music they left behind. I absolutely said I wanted to be a part of it. And from the music that I've heard, 
to the music that was left behind by Wayne, to the record deal that we're all negotiating now, to the tour that we're getting ready to do together. I'm honored to, to co-headline with them and let them close the United States, which is, uh, you know, most people wouldn't do, okay? Yeah. But I'm humbled by the fact that they're going to go pay homage to one of the best records. I mean, Wisconsin Death Trip is by far one of the best records in the last, you know, 25 years, period. And and I, I, I believe that. I love the music. So to be part of that is a a general pleasure and it's an honor to be part of something so special you know and and the band people don't know this but the band is giving 50 percent of the proceeds to his mother so this is a a real deal uh something special you know that's coming through so i'm just very very excited to be part of it i think you know they're getting ready to come see you guys i think everybody should come to these shows you're going to get something extremely special it's all the original lineup and they're playing Wisconsin Death Trip from start to finish. Yeah. You guys are going to get a show that's, you know, phenomenal, man. Phenomenal. And look, I'm glad they brought it out. A lot of bands, and, and I said this to my wife, so th- this is how I'll end this. I said this to my wife. If I were to die unexpectedly, which is, you know, could happen. I was just on a mountain bike and I and I crashed and I was out cold for like a minute and a half. Like, I, you know, I, I go full on in my life. If I surf, I surf massive waves. If I... If I bomb hills on bikes, I bomb massive hills that you shouldn't be bombing when you're not 20 years old, okay? Yeah. I said, if I die, what would you do? Would you? And she has immediately said, my son, Simon Blade, who's actually putting out his first record next year, uh, who's, who's the only guest on my new record, who sounds like me, but lower and higher and more gnarly, she said, yeah, absolutely. I would get our son, and he would go out and do your song. And I said, right. So bringing this band back and doing this is amazing for the band. And Anastasia said 100%, absolutely. So to be part of it is a, is a is a journey that we should all be proud of, right? Just like we were on the journey when ACDC got back with a new singer or, you know, Alice in Chains or, I mean, I could name yeah. a million of them, you know? Yeah. I, I think the, one of the key things yeah. you, you touched on there when you were talking about Static X was giving the proceeds uh, to, to, to Wayne's mother. That suggests to me, then, it's not about money. It's about what you've kept saying, which is art. They're doing it for art. Oh, no. I can't. I, you know, and on the internet, I've heard that, oh, it's a cash grab. It's like, if it's a cash grab, it's a cash grab for Wayne's mom. Yeah. Now, wouldn't that be something to go help the family that lost their son? Like, come on, man. Like, it's a, it's a beautiful thing that they're doing. I back it wholeheartedly. I said it from the very beginning. I put my name on it. I put my band with it. And I support it, and I'm I'm real glad that they're doing it. Not only for the family, but for the fans. Um, and just coincidentally, actually, I had said to my band, "Hey, look, Cold Chamber's never going to get back together again. I'll be goddamned if I'm going to not do uh, some of those Cold Chamber songs that made me for like the rest of my life." And so we're going to start implementing some of those and doing those songs and going out with Static. Like it all made sense, you know? Perfect. Perfect. Well, look, thank you very much for your time, and thank you for your wife as well, because I've taken up her time. <laughs> so I'll let you go. Uh, thank you, brother. I look forward to seeing you guys uh, when you get down here at the end of August. All right. Have a great day, man. You too, Des. Take care.